Hello, Lizzie here of Lizzie Curtis Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make Aggie and Aggie is a beautiful foundation paper piece um, mat and it also has applique on it as well so although it's a little mat we're actually covering loads of loads and loads of techniques with this uh, the foundation paper piece thing I don't really want you to get um, too uptight about it I've made it super easy for you at least I hope I have um, I've broken it down and there's, there's only five or six pieces to it so it should be dead easy for you but that's the front cover of Aggie she's part of the kind of trilogy that I'm launching in April 2023 um, you can see the cushion behind me here wrong way that way <laughs> there's the cushion behind me that's Anne you can just about see the bunting just above my head and that's Alice so this um, Matt Aggie is one of those three and they're all being launched together as a group of three for my online sewing group and they get that for free every month um, and then they're in the shop from May 2023 at 5.99 each so um, they're available to everybody if this is the sort of thing that you like and you just want something really nice and easy and and satisfying I suppose to to make then Aggie is going to be one in fact the whole set is pretty much like that so if we look on the overhead and I'll just get my pattern out of the way let's just pop it over here um, this is what Aggie looks like in the flesh so to speak um, so the background is made up of foundation paper piecing as I said and actually um, I've used vintage fabrics um, from Kim Porter now if you don't know Kim Porter um, please go and look her up on Instagram mainly Instagram not Facebook because she sells the most exquisite vintage fabrics and so the background has been has been made up with that obviously you don't need to do that but we kind of got the sky I've kind of got the rolling hills and then we've got our gorgeous mushroom applique house um, if you've already seen Alice you'll have um, seen the mushroom house made I'll, I'll show you another little sample of it um, and those that are what we're making mainly in this uh, trilogy the cushion Anna is obviously a whole lot bigger but Alice and Aggie are the same size pieces and of course because you get digital downloads you can make these different sizes if you want to by just um, altering the print on your um, printer so it's a great little pattern I'm really pleased with it and it goes very very well with my little foundation paper piece to mat now in the pattern itself you do get all the components I'm just going to pop that out of the way for a second you get all of the components so you get you could assume that this is the front where you're going to stitch in the pattern I've actually used the coloured version only because it's a little bit more visual there's a reason why we've got the coloured one but firstly this could well be your front in other words the right side once you start stitching foundation paper foundation paper piecing is all about mirror imaging so for instance if you stitch this one on the coloured you end up with what I have here where and if you look for this little um, sort of triangle here you'll see that it's on the opposite side I don't think it really matters whether you stitch on the coloured one or whether you stitch on the the black and white one um, I, it, for me it was it was more about um, the positioning of the mushroom so on this one I've got it maybe to the left this one I've got it maybe to the right so you've got tons of options so I will be stitching on this one today because that will give me the opposite effect to that so my little bit of green here will end up over here okay so I don't want you to think about it too much because if you start thinking about it it fuddles your brain a little bit um, the idea of giving you a coloured one is because you could use these as pattern pieces so for instance you could cut these out um, let's do it let's just cut a few pieces out <clears throat> the pattern gives you two options the pattern gives you um, it tells you really that you can cut these pieces out as pattern pieces or you can use the rectangles that I've given you in the pattern so the pattern gives you exact measurements for rectangles now I'm just I'm going to go bigger I always like to go bigger the outside solid line is where you'll end up cutting to 
and the dash line is um, your stitching line when you go to piece it all together. Um, it, it depends on how you're going to finish it. You could, um, what we call, bag, bag it out or you could do what I've done. So let's just finish cutting these bits out. So um, when you cut out like this, when you're using these as your pattern pieces, um, you need to cut your fabric at least, well, minimum half an inch. I would go for, for three quarters of an inch. You can see now we're getting the pattern pieces cut. So if we do that quite quickly, of course it never is when you try to cut. <laughs> right, so let's put these down. So you could actually, let's try and get these going the right way. Let's just put that like that. I'm pretty sure that goes like that. Oh yes, part of the mushroom. So what you could do um, is um, number these. Um, in fact, I'll probably uh, readjust the pattern for that. So you can go one, two, three, four, and five, because that's how you stitch them together. And each pattern piece would need to be cut in a different coloured fabric. And that's why I have coloured these, because you will know now that you're going to have the blue for the sky, a slightly darker green that goes in the background, a slightly more medium green in the centre, and this is all a maybe possibly, and um, coming up a little bit brighter for the front, and even brighter still or lighter still for that fifth piece. So it kind of, you kind of stagger the colours, and by having the coloured uh, pieces will help you choose your fabrics. So for instance, if I was to let's cut one of these out I've got a bug fabric here that I've got these are all vintage fabrics I've got this gorgeous bug, bug, bug fabric so for instance if I wanted to use number three for the bugs I would lay that on top I would position it so it fits nicely it's not going to fit across there it will fit like this. I'm not. I'm not at all worried about bias. I'm really not worried about bias. All I want is the fabric to do the work for me. So, this this could be my pattern piece. So, pattern piece coloured facing, right side of your fabric facing, and you could just anchor it down with a pin. And if I bring my little cutting mat up we could use our rotary cutter and cut this out. Now, like I said, you'll want to cut at least half an inch to three quarters of an inch bigger than your pattern piece, okay? And all of your pieces must go over this solid outside line, all of them, if it's appropriate, obviously. So that's our, let's put that in the bin, just get, let's get rid of it. So that is that piece cut. Let's make sure I'm new. I knew that static would pick that up. Let's put those back. So what you would do is you would cut out all of your pieces like that. OK, and because they're all right side up, they'll all be perfect for when you place them down. Or you could do the other method which I'm going to do today, which is using rectangles. And I've given you all the measurements for one, two, three, four, five, um, to place on your foundation paper piece paper. So let's get rid of the pattern pieces. So you can you can see now how that coloured piece will help you. You could also use that colour piece also for, for stitching. Maybe as a visual that would be really good for you. So once again here's our black and white image. We don't need all of that. Now if you're printing on a um, letter size, it, it don't adjust your printer. I mean you still want to print it at 100%. Um, it, you you don't, don't need to worry. It will fit on your letter size paper. So let's just trim this down. And I'm, I'm quite happy to work with with a foundation paper piece, piece like this, where the solid line I can see, I'm, I can, be, I'm visually aware of it, um, because all of your fabrics must go over that line, or the very minimum they should go beyond that dash line there, because that is your um, seam allowance. 
So the first thing you're going to do is you need to stitch, and if we number this again, um, and I think what I'll do, I will make sure I've done that on the pattern. So I'm one, two, three, four, and five. So we know that number one is our first piece. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? And what you'll need, if you've got them, is an add a quarter ruler. And I'm going to bring my mat in again because we'll, we will need to do a little bit of cutting. Um, I'm not sure which way is the best way to do it. Let's, let's keep it like that. I can move the whole thing. Um, and a postcard of some sort okay so those are your main ingredients and we'll get on to the mushroom house in a second let me just pop all those bits to one side I've got a, I've got a bit of a heap on my desk here of all the bits we need because although like I said it's a little mat it's actually quite involved with the foundation paper piecing and um, the applique so the first thing we need to do is to fold this line here between one and two and always the best thing I can suggest is using a postcard. I want you to ignore everything else that's going on with that piece of paper. I just want you to concentrate on one and two. So we're folding along that line regardless okay and of course we're going to go right across the paper there so I want you just to fold that make sure that that's hugging your card and also going across that line okay so that's that's following that beautifully let's leave the, the postcard in there for the time being the first wee piece we're going to pick up is the blue and once again we can refer I've cut my piece up now so let's just get a second one we can refer to the colour diagram again. We know that this is one. This is our first piece. We know it's going to be blue because it's the sky. So I'm going to get my scrap. And um, what you need to do with the first piece is right sides down. Now, although this is very, this is very vintage, as I say, and you might not be able to tell very easily the right side from the wrong side on the camera there. But I can see, and this is the right side. I'm going to place it right side down on my mat. And I'm going to line up my fabric and quite obviously because we've got we want to have a little bit of extra overhang there I can just about see through it so if I lift that up you can see that you see where the solid line is um, you can see that my fabric is going just a wee bit beyond that and that's perfect and then we've got this extra piece here well we're going to be stitching let me just move that back again. All we're going to be stitching is this line here. This line here, let me move that, that line there. Okay, so we just want to make sure our fabric extends past that line. So let's just fold that again. And you can see it does. It'll end up a stitching from about here. But just to make sure I, I've got a visual on it, then I'm going to cut. <clears throat> So I'm going to add, put my add a quarter ruler against the fold of the paper and the postcard and I'm just going to trim that back. There we go. And so that is my quarter inch seam there. I'm not interested in this bit, I'm just interested in that bit. And then what I'm going to do is get my second piece. Oh, there we go. And this is a slightly darker fabric. This one, the second piece, goes right side up. Okay. And I'm just going to sit it underneath my first piece. And I'm going to line it up. So let me just take that away for a moment. So we're interested in that piece there. So I'm just going to line that up with my fabric. There we go. I'm not interested about anything up here, just here. I'll bring that back in now. And I'm just going to overhang that, both those pieces, by a quarter inch. And I can just see through my paper here, and I can see that um, there's my stitch line, or so there's my cutting line just there. So I know this is fine. Then I'm going to fold that back, take my postcard out of the way, and I'm going to pop a pin in. Now, you, you don't always have to do that. You might find that um, it gets, a, you know, you can hold all the layers perfectly fine. But if you can't, just pop a pin in, check again to make sure nothing has moved. I mean, it's moved slightly, but it's, that's fine. Fold that back and we're going to take it to the machine. Let me get my pen. 
and we're going to stitch from here to out here somewhere. So we're going to go beyond that line. We're going to extend it. When we get to this bit here, I'm going to do a little bit of a back stitch. So where I'm going to cut all this back, I'm going to do a little bit of a back stitch so it's secure. And But we start from here and we go to here. So that's what we'll do now. Let's bring the machine in. Let's move all my bits and bobs. I've got lots of bits and bobs going on here. Okay, um, no need to set your machine to a quarter inch seam allowance, not at all. So I'm going to start from the outside edge. Just make sure your fabric is still sitting nicely. Pop your foot down and I'm going to just reduce my stitch length down to, um, well, you could go right down to 1.4, uh, really small. I will keep mine a little bit bigger so that we speed up a bit. Anyway, let's go. Get, let's get going. So I'm stitching along that line, and I'm going to stop pretty much as I, near as I can to where I had that mark. So I'm going to hold it up to show you. So if we look at it, let's take the pin out. So if we look at it like that you can see that I've stitched from here all the way across to here. And like I said, try to remember to do a back stitch just here because that will secure all your layers. Okay, if we turn this around like that, we then need to fold that back. Now you can fold it and finger press and that's fine. Okay, um, you can use a, a nice um, warm iron. I wouldn't use a hot iron, but I would use a warm iron. So let's do number three. So there's only five to this. So you'll, you really will speed through making this little background piece and you might find it useful for other things. You could um, make it bigger even and you could double the pieces up and perhaps make something um, you know like a, a cushion front or something like that so this time if we look at the um the picture here we want to stitch between two and three so this line here all the way along from here all the way to here that and that's our second line so it's the line between two and three okay let me just uh, turn it so you can see it that way that might be easier so number three piece goes from here all the way along here but when we put our rectangle down it will easily cover that whole area so first of all we need to first of all make, let's make sure our fabric is sitting nice and flat let's just move the mat as well i want to make it so it doesn't look too complicated for you. We're going to use our postcard again, and I'm putting my postcard against that line two and three. Oh, you don't have to use a postcard, it can be any piece of card, but it just so happen I've got them handy. So fold again over that line, and you'll see we've got quite a bit of wasted fabric here, and that's absolutely fine. Far better to have it too big and cut than too small and uh, have to take it off and start again. So all the way along that folded edge, we're removing those pieces. Okay. So don't forget, we're, all we're interested in is this area here, number three. So if I get now my number three fabric, which is just that little bit lighter, again, it's very vintagey. We're going to do right side up. We're going to place it on the mat. We're going to put our piece down. Well, let's fold it back so we can see what we're doing. We want it to fit along that quarter inch line that we've just cut, but we want it to go right up to the top here, right up here like that so all of our fabrics meet don't care what's going on down here i'm just interested in this bit here so let's fold it back let's check again see if we're happy with how that's positioned i think i'm very happy with that and of course don't forget we have gone of quite a bit over so if you wanted to you could just move that along a little bit just make sure it's still lined up and that's you can see it is and then I'm just going to pin all those pieces in place 
There we go. So I'm going to take it to the machine now. Let's do it that way so you can see. I'm going to take it to the machine now and I'm going to stitch from here to here to the end of that line between two and three. Okay. And uh, you'll find um, as you perhaps make, perhaps you're going to make a few of these that uh, you, you get quicker and quicker and quicker, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. So let's take it up to the machine. You try and keep all your layers sitting nicely together. And don't forget to do a little back stitch at the beginning where you're going to cut back your fabrics because you you'll, you kind of um, cut through your stitches and it's quite a weak area. So just make sure everything's sitting flat. All the way along. Right to where we said, I'm going to do a little back stitch there and a cut. There we go. So let's take it uh, to our mat again. Let's just move the machine. So you can see if I hold it like that for just for a moment, oh, <laughs> we've got our stitch line from here across to here. That's between two and three. Okay, so let's flip it over and push that back. So you're going to either finger press it or you're going to get um, a nice dry warm iron. Let's just cut, caught that edge there. So I'll just pull that away. So finger press it. Now if these are really, as I said, old fabrics and they're not happy being finger pressed. They just, they want to do their own thing. Um, quilting cotton is obviously better. Polyester is obviously better as well, you know, poly cotton. So there's our piece there. You can see how that's starting to take shape. We've got the sky and the first two rolling hills. So let's just pop that back again. So if we do it that way, you can see the next line we're going to stitch is between three and four. So let me just do a little arrow here so you can see. So this is the line we're going to stitch. Ignore the fact you've got a mushroom house sitting on there. So you're going to start from, or you're going to end or start from here. You're going to stitch all the way along this line here and you're going to finish here where that first dot was. Okay, that's where you're going. In fact, it just comes slightly off there. So all the way along there, that's the line we're interested in. So the first thing we need to do is fold our paper back. Now, my card isn't long enough, but that doesn't matter as long as I've got it uh, the majority along that line. So fold it back. You can see my fabric is still too big. So let's get my quarter inch. You could use a regular ruler if you want to and just cut all this away. So although you've got a little bit of waste with this, it's not much, it's not much. So now we've trimmed those pieces back, we now have to add piece number four, which is that sized out rectangle again. So let me get my piece. So once again, we're doing right side facing up. So our pieces are right sides together. It's sometimes it's a little easier to say, it's right side facing up to you. So just see where your line is. So your line that you're going to be stitching is between four and three. Let me just turn it so you can see it better. You're going to be stitching from this line here, this mark here, all the way across here. So ignore the fact we've got a mushroom going in between. So that's the line you want to stitch. So the edge of your fabric must come up to here. So if we bear that in mind, when we put our fabric, let's turn that. When we put our fabric down, right sides up, we want to make sure that this end, let's get it lined up for you. That's it, very happy with that. So this end of our fabric is a sticking over the end of our design. So if I bring that in, gosh, I've got a lot of stuff on my desk. Let me just move some bits and pieces here. <laughs> So let's just bring that over. So this is the line we're stitching, but we want our fabric to come up to here. And if we look at it, it definitely is. Okay, so fold that back. Let's pop a pin in to hold all our layers together. You might want to sort of get your fingers under there and grab it. 
So we're now going to stitch from this line out all the other way round, whichever you're comfortable with. Like I say, once you've done one or two of these, they are so easy. Um, I'm trying to be as thorough as I can because I know that foundation paper piecing for some people is a little bit daunting. I do understand that. Let me just get my fabric lined up properly again. Yeah. So we're going from the outside of that solid line. We're going to ignore the fact we've got a mushroom sitting in the middle of it. You can draw a line through if you need that kind of visual line. Um, and I, another thing is, don't worry about your needle. If you're concerned at the end of all this and you want it uh, you want to change it because you've been stitching through paper then obviously you obviously you can do that so right to the end I'll show you on the side so there we are so we have stitched from there all the way across to there and we've only got one more piece to do which is this one here <clears throat> so let's move the machine out of the way again so flip it over Give it a finger press. <laughs> I love these fabrics, they're so gorgeous. Um, like I say, you might want to get a, a warm iron to that. Okay, so we're on the last piece now. So if I turn this around, the piece we're going to stitch now is the line between four and five. So if I just do a little arrow, so this line here, so let's just extend it and extend it here. So we're going to start stitching here and we're going to finish stitching here. Then try to remember if you can a little back stitch where that solid line is. So we're going to fold our card along that line. So let me turn it because that's easier for me. I'm just going to pop my card along that line between four and five, fold my paper back against the card you can see lots needs trimming but that's how I prefer it especially if you haven't done it before I don't want you to worry about it so the rectangles that I've um, measured out for you will give you plenty of um, scope you shouldn't go wrong there we go so there's our cut line so now we need to get our last piece of fabric which of course is going to be the bugs because I love it so right side facing pop it underneath and pop it down so we've got a quarter of an inch sticking out over the edge with the piece that we've just cut and trimmed back okay remove your card flap that back and like I say if you're not sure pop a pin in I think after a little while you won't do that but just for um, safety, we will. So we're going to stitch now from there all the way across to here, okay? So your paper's starting to look a little bit messy. That's only because I've drawn on it, but you won't need to draw on yours. You can just follow what I've done. So let's take it to the machine. And we're going to stitch on that line. So a little back stitch where the solid line is all the way along right off the edge and little back stitch again and it's done so although that seems to have taken a long time when you go to do it it will only take you 10 minutes but I've had to explain every single step to you so let's have a look on the overhead so you can see now this is our third I'm sorry our fifth and final piece so that just needs a little finger press back there we go and if we look at it it looks rather messy doesn't it so let's flip it over try and make sure your fabrics are sitting nice and straight like I said a little um, cool iron would be good um, I'm just going to get my ruler and we're now going to trim it. So I, I need to stand up for this, guys. So we're going to trim it along that um, solid line. And then all of a sudden, it starts to look absolutely incredible. It's, I, I love 
foundation paper piecing it sometimes it kind of blows your mind a little bit but all you all I've got to say is whatever you stitch is going to look the opposite on the right side when you come to take all your papers off and reveal everything um, it's it's uh, like I say it's the opposite so as long as you don't mind how your background looks and it really doesn't matter it's just rolling fields <laughs> then do what you like okay let's just uh, I'm gathering lots of stuff here guys so let's have a little look at this so this is now our finished piece and if we flip it over oh my gosh that looks amazing doesn't it so all we need is to do the mushroom now um, but we need to take these papers out if you have used a nice little stitch they should just rip out hold on to your seams in case you've forgotten to back stitch because if you if you're a bit gung-ho and you pull at these papers and you haven't back stitched it will pull your your stitches out so um, just be aware of that so just go steady just be gentle with it try to remove all of the papers um, a great tip is to use a seam um, seam ripper or a stiletto just to get hold of these little fiddly bits and believe me if you do a lot of foundation paper piecing you know what I mean about fiddly bits if you leave one or two little pieces in like that piece there you, you, I would just leave it I, I don't think I would fuss too much and then there's the last bit there so it's all my papers out and quite honestly that looks absolutely gorgeous I'm loving the bugs I've just seen a little bit of them there so what I would do now is to get my um, backing now I'm using Thermalam oh got all my bits let's not lose my flowers oh my word we could we could be in trouble guys we'll do our best <laughs> so get your Thermalam and you want to get your adhesive sprayed and just pop that down. I'm going to give it a little iron first. I really would like you to try this. F foundation paper piecing can be a little bit daunting, but if you do this little tiny mat, it, it'll so you'll suddenly have a light bulb moment. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. So let's just give this a little iron. Just nice and gently again you don't want to pull at those seams if you use quilting cotton your mat will be very 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 lovely and neat because I'm using vintage fabrics they, they still have this mind of their own well they've been doing things for a lot of years haven't they <laughs> without any bother so just a little bit of spray that down we'll put our mat over the top because what we're going to do is we're going to be stitching through all of the layers with our mushroom so let's let me get a pre-prepared mushroom for you to have a look at then we'll I'll show you quickly how to pop them together if I can get myself sorted so I've got one there now of course it, on the, the original one that I do which I'll bring in I've put put it that side and there's my rolling hill the little one that's probably the one that I would mostly look at so if you wanted to you could put it that side um, let's get a different one see what that looks like oh, oh. I do love them so we could have opposites like that I think that's quite nice actually but I'll, I'll show you quickly how to make the mushrooms up and then we're good to go so the first thing you need to do try not to lose my flowers is to get a pencil you don't need a heat erasable pen get a piece of bond or web or heat and bond steam and seam any of those things and you want to trace off um, all of your components and how they've been spread out onto the, sh the pattern sheet is you can actually um, draw around them as they as they are and the thing about things like this these sort of quirky mushrooms these wonky mushrooms is that if you go off the line then you've created 
an alternative or a slightly different version of. So you're actually tracing this onto the paper side of your Bonder web, steam seam, heat and bond, whatever you're going to use. Uh, your pattern piece will have numbers on. This is my, oops, this is my copy. Um, and again, you're just going to, I mean, you know, if, you, if this is too fiddly for you, create your own lines, but do them in that sort of size because then you've got um, the staggered effect. Let me show you this. You've got the staggered effect of the flowers, sort of um, big, medium and, and little. And then once you've transferred that design, let's get that out of the way, you're going to just cut around. So for instance, um, <coughs> excuse me, these are the two doors. You've got an outer door and an inner door. Let's pop that into one side. Let's get rid of everything as we're going, going because I've got a desk full of stuff now. Throw those little bits away. Um, and you're just going to do a rough cut. So all we've got is those two little pieces there. Now, well, let me get my ironing mat again. Here we go. There we go. So we've got those two little pieces there. And then what you need is a little piece of fabric. So um, let me just gather all my bits in here. Um, let's just choose a couple of bits that I have on my desk. I've got that bug piece. This, this, I'm, go, I'm, go, I'm using quilting cotton, but I just need something to show you an example of. Um, and you're going on the wrong side. You're putting your pieces on the wrong side. So maybe one of the doors will go here. And on this one, I love that green. So we're going to fussy cut and I'm going to put my inner door on that green. So let's just put those down. And with this type of adhesive, it's only a few seconds. You don't need to worry too much about eight seconds and things like that with the same as, uh, well, um, any sort of interfacing is usually about an eight second heating up and melting of the glue. So then all you're going to do is you're, you're going to neatly cut, cut around these. And you'll notice that my left hand is doing all the turning and my right hand stays absolutely static. So there's one. And let's just curve that around. So you get a better cut if you do it this way. Okay. And then super and across there like that so we've got our two tiny little doors there to take the paper backing off just scrape a little bit on the back please be careful with that I'm always very concerned that you might um, scrape your paper uh, your fabric so just just be careful just go canny as they say well some people do um, and then you've got the two doors it's ready to be um, layered up and to oh it's got a bit of static on there let's try to get rid of that uh, you've got the two doors ready to layer up to, be, to put onto your mushroom I'm sorry it's so tiny hopefully we can get John to zoom in on that right so the next stage is to put our mushroom together now I do suggest you use an applique mat so I bring my mat in it's just a silicon sheet so if you've got something um, that's that's like this that you can use that maybe you've got something for baking and that type of thing that takes the heat from the oven I'm just making sure I've got all my bits because I suddenly had a waft of air and everything blew off my desk um, yeah so if you've got some sort of baking sheet just um, just try it out with scrap pieces of fa fabric first but build up your applique on one of these it's so much easier so the first thing we need to do is we need to put our, our kind of mushroom trunk down which is this piece here so we can see on the over head how that looks then we've got our roof so we're going to build all this up in one hit then we need a little chimney so I'm just going to move all these bits out of the way I've got a, I've got a sneaky suspicion I've lost a few bits um, ah here's the chimney oops and it's got a flat side and it's got a curved side and the flat side goes underneath the curve of the roof We've got, um, let me get all my bits in so I can see them quite quickly. 
there we go so we've got two um, spotty windows which are slightly different to the roof but once the stitching is done they'll stand stand out more oh in actual fact I'll tell you what that is silly me that is the inside of the door so this is the outer door the bigger piece this is the inner because I wanted my window to match okay then we've got our flowers so let me just pick those up now all of these will get attached to the main thing the whole thing gets glued together there's the other flowers outside yeah and you really want to choose lovely little ditzy prints because um, you can see how well that's working with the with the, the, the little bushes here the flower bushes um, we've got a lovely window here let's get that thread out of the way that's it and of course you, some, you can fussy cut if you don't fancy doing the free motion embroidery because I know it's not for everybody then fussy cut and then when you do lay those pieces down doesn't that look lovely um, you, you've got little flowers in your windows and things like that so and the, can you see there's a flower on the the chimney pot there and that was deliberately cut like that so once I'm happy with how those are sitting just bring your iron in and just pop it over the top count to about four take it off and move take it off and move so you're only counting to about four and you don't want to be moving it you're not ironing it you're just literally adhering the glue and I think I'm pretty happy with that now um, normally you would leave this to cool um, but obviously we don't have that sort of time so just get something really sharp and thin and just ease that off because obviously the glue on the back of all these pieces has adhered to your silicon mat so just peel that off and there you have a piece of applique to go onto your your mat so then we can have a little look and see how we feel about it I think it's glorious look at that so when you position your little house and so you can see now because I've got one solid piece it's much easier to move around um, just be careful of your seam allowances along here so if I mean if you wanted to you could make a little mark with your perhaps your heat erasable pen would be good and just make sure it's going to be nowhere near your seam allowances around these three sides and once you're happy then all you've got to do is get your iron and iron it down so again the same rule applies count to four allow the heat of the glue to melt and just adhere that down and what you want is to make sure that all of the extremities of all of your pieces are glued now I'm going to explain that in a second let's just get these so just a little bit four seconds is all you need oh, I just think that's looking gorgeous so now I can turn my iron off so what I mean is when you come to um, stitch this you don't want any of these to be loose these little ends here the ends of your chimney the corners the, the pointy bits anything that's that's look that do you see that flower has not quite stuck well, when I come to stitch that that will cause me a problem possibly with my needle so let's just tell it who's boss and give it some more heat and while it's still hot I don't want you to touch it it's still it's still there and I'll tell you why that is because it's on a seam and it's sitting proud so I'm just going to get the iron in there and get it stuck in and it's on that seam that's, that's the only reason why so let's bring it around again and uh, let that heat do its thing so yeah so just make sure that all these extremities all these corners these points are actually now adhered down um, and well and truly stuck so if you don't want to do your free motion just leave it like that it looks perfectly fine um, 
it's up to you isn't it so the next thing we're going to do is the actual stitching now please use just a dark thread so dark gray dark brown dark blue don't please don't use black it's just a wee bit severe um, I'm using a dark gray and it still looks quite dark and, and overpowering um, you could if you wanted to use any color you like uh, it's traditionally I suppose in a way sort of uh, black is used but I think it's too for me it's too harsh okay I'm just going to swap my machines over so I swap my machine I've got the other one still sitting there but I'm using my this old Benina um, which I bought especially for applique um, would you believe for free motion embroidery because it's so good it's about 50 years old but it's just super um, so drop your feed dogs if you can't drop your feed dogs then please put your stitch length on zero it'll work just as well stitch length of course is not applicable when it comes to free motion you you make the stitch length and quite honestly I, I'm not going to be bothered about what size length of stitch that you stitch if you end up stitching on the spot in some places that's perfectly fine nobody's going to have a look at your stitching they're just going to admire your little mat and how beautiful it is so um, as, we've, as we did when we did all the other videos we start with the roof but of course you can do start wherever you like um, so foot down I do want you to practice though before you just suddenly start trying to stitch free motion I want you to have a little practice and just limber yourself up and get ready for moving your fabric around right let's get going oh and a sharp needle change your needle if in doubt change it um, use a 10 or a 12 so as long as I can keep my hands out of the way for you we're just following the line of the roof if you have to move your fabric like I'm doing please do that let's get our needle in and go across the roof about wriggly lines I just want you to do it basically I do a couple of little stitches on the spot just to lock the ends of your stitches if you've got a thread cutter brilliant this old machine doesn't so it's the old-fashioned lift your needle up lift your foot up pull it away nicely and carefully and just snip your threads we'll snip all the ends at the end the other thing we need to do is to draw a line underneath the roof so I'll draw it and then I'll show it to you <clears throat> again I don't want you to worry about this this is literally let me hold it up this is literally that line there I've just drawn that line there so we're going to stitch from there to there and from there to there you're obviously not stitching across the trunk of the um, mushroom and then we'll stitch the chimney and then the two windows and we'll try to remember this time to do smoke <laughs> so let's pop it under the machine so needle down so you know you're in the right place to start foot down try to do a little back stitch or a couple of little stitches on the spot and come across to the stem of your mushroom little back stitch which I know is a little tricky if you're new to this but um, after a little bit of practice it will come a second nature you'll know how much or how little you need to move um, your fabric to achieve that I don't want you to be afraid of this at all and then needle up foot up pull your threads away so we've done the underneath bit so let me just snip that so you can see what that looks like just get that thread out of the way there there we go so I'll trim this all up when I'm finished but I've just stitched along there can you see how that looks so I'm going to do the chimney <clears throat> so needle down foot down if you can do a little back stitch great so at this stage 
If we're going to turn a corner, make sure your needle's down. And if you haven't secured those little tiny corners of the chimney, you will absolutely know about it now. So worth spending that two minutes doing that. Okay, that's our chimney. Now I'm not going to pull the threads away and break them this time. I'm just going to skip across, my foot is up, I'm going to skip across to the bottom of the window. So let's just pop the needle in, foot down. And just work our way around the window as neatly as you can. Now all of this could be done by hand. So I've done the shape of the window and I'll show you when I've done. And then I'm just going to do the crossbar of the window. I'll do this one slightly different to the others. There we go. So I'll take this out of the machine to show you. So pull away and snip. So if I show you, there's the chimney I've just done and there's the window. And obviously it'll look a lot better when all the threads are snipped, but I'll, like I say, I'll do that in one go. So, little back stitch if you can manage that. And then all the way around. And you might just want to do this outside, you might not want to do the crossbar, that's up to you. It's your, it's your mushroom house. And then across the centre. Okay. So let me just trim those threads a little bit so you get an idea of what it looks like. Um, duck, uh, duck build scissors are good for this, if you've got some. I've got some, but of course I can never find these things. <laughs> so there's our roof done. So now we're going to come down the side of the house. Now I'm not going to go over my little flower bushes there. I'm only going to go as far as the top. And then I'm going to come across the bottom, stop there, and then up that other side. So let's just do that. So needle down, foot down. If you notice there, I, I was on this, working on the spot for a moment. That's because I had the cuff of my blouse caught on the corner of my machine and I couldn't move the fabric, couldn't move things. So um, <laughs> just be aware of that. If you've got one of those lovely big tables, that's perfect. And if you wanted to, you could use gloves. Now I'm going to go right across the bottom of the door. Okay, and I want to just hop across that big flower bush there, needle down, so you can see and hear the speed I'm going, I'm not going super speedy, there's really no need, it's not a competition of who can do this the fastest, I definitely lose. I just like to take my time. Sometimes when I'm free motioning, stitching, I will have my speed up, but not when I'm doing little projects like this. It just needs careful guidance, if nothing else. So let me hold that up. So now you can see I've gone down to there. I've gone right across the bottom and I've gone up the side there. So now I'm going to go around both of those doors and the window. And I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll do the flowers. So needle down. Now depending on how, whoops, how you cut your door will depend on how sort of what bigger gap you've got between two different the two different sizes. But I would if if you could, I would like it if you could stitch both both doors and that gives you some perspective. So I'm going around my second door now, all the way around, taking my time. And what I'm going to do is come back up again and I'm going to put a little door handle in. I'm not breaking my threads, I'm just 
literally doing a little round dot not easy you might want to do a French knot and then I'm just going to put a window pane in the top of my door we'll leave it like that and then I'm going to do the window and then I'm going to show you what those two things look like so needle in foot down and away we go So out of all the projects, this one has actually the most techniques and will possibly take you more time, even though the cushion's quite big, all that sort of thing. Because we've got the foundation paper piecing, it takes up just that little bit more time. So let me just snip my threads. And the, the back will look a mess for the moment, but we can tidy that up if we want to. So there is the door and the window done. Okay, you can see how the little door handle looks. <laughs> and now I'm going to do the flowers. So I want you to think about whether you want to do that or not because they are quite small. So depending on how confident you are on your skills, you know, your skill level, will depend perhaps if you want to tackle these or not. So needle in. And you'll notice that I'm only doing one row of stitching. Normally with a plique you might want to do two or three. That's pretty normal. Um, but with this it would be too much, it'd be overpowering. So I'm only doing one row of stitching. So I've done the one, the big one. Now I'm going to hop over to the three. So it doesn't take long. <coughs> So don't forget, it's the black thread or the grey thread or the brown, whatever colour you're using, you are going to see that with these flowers, unless your fabric is dark. So you want to try and be as neat as you can. Um, or use a darker, um, darker fabric, maybe. Uh, use a variegated, because that sort of um, does help disguise a multitude of sins. <laughs> Um, but they will, people will see the flowers in your darker thread rather than the fabric. Good. So that's it done. So it doesn't take long, does it? Let's just cut these threads. Let me show you. So I've jumped between the, the flowers. We just get those trimmed. As like I say, duck duck bill um, scissors are perfect for this job. Right, all my bits off of there. Oh, I'll snip the back. There we go. So let's hold it up again now. So that's my big one, my three little ones, and you can see how the stitching really stands out. Now if you wanted to, you could do some grass. <laughs> so if you see the video for Anna, the cushion, you'll see how I do the grass. But maybe you want to just leave it as that. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so that done. I'm now going to swap over machines again and we're going to do the last bit, which is the trimming down and the binding. Dead easy. I'll see you in a sec. So we've done the free motion embroidery so now we're ready to finish the mat off and do the binding um, this is the easy part as far as i'm concerned i'm going to stand up i'm trimming back just my thermal am at the moment so i'm going to get a nice neat edge with that to be honest it's such a small project you perhaps might not want to bother cutting your thermal am bigger as we would do when you're quilting but it's always nice to have that safety net, isn't it? So let's trim all this away. I must admit, it always comes to life when you've trimmed and everything is super duper neat. There we go. Right, so. There is our little mat. Doesn't it look gorgeous? Really does. Um, and we're going to add the, the backing to it. And again, I'm using some vintage fabric. So again, with your spray, 
just give that a little spray don't need much and then we're going to put our vintage fabric or, or a fabric over the back and again that might need cutting back but that's fine so just make sure that's lovely and glued down so you can see we haven't quilted this but it's so small it doesn't need to be quilted so let's just trim all this away make it nice and neat lovely really lovely so that is our mat done we just need to do the binding now I'm using a commercially um, made bias binding um, it does not have to be biased it can be just regular binding folded it's three quarters of an inch and the um, the folds in are just over a quarter inch they're not quite three eighths Ideally you want a quarter inch so if you make your own make the fold the, the, the part that where the folds have gone under three quarters of an inch wide and then if you can get your folds quarter inch that's perfect because that's what we're going to use to, um, to stitch that's our guideline when we stitch. Um, if you wanted to do your regular binding where you're cutting maybe a two inch or two and a half inch width and folding and doing it exactly as you would if you were making a quilt but sometimes it's quite nice to do something different. So um, to start off with and I'll start off at the side this time it doesn't matter where you start you'll always see the join because it's such a small piece. Um, you're going to open up your binding so it looks like this and you're going to fold this end over so it's super duper neat. Now again you might want to pop that under the iron and just make sure that that is perfectly I'm going to put a pin there otherwise my hands are in the way so you want to make sure that that is all lined up so pin through all of your layers if that's what you want to do but you might want to iron that so it's lovely and neat but just fold it over don't worry about this fold here that 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 will work in you can always open that up if you want to and still fold it over it's going to work just the same but because this is commercially made it's the creases are just so lovely and neat now if you want to you can stitch from the back bring it over to the front and top stitch on your machine or you can do what I'm going to do this time is put it on the front take it to the back and hand stitch it I'll leave that for you to decide um, both ways are fab there's no right or wrong surely okay let's bring the machine in so I've kept my um, little crease over my little fold over exactly how it, how it was with a pin and I'm going to start stitching just beyond that and come onto that crease line the crease line is my guide so we're doing a quarter inch so what I'll do this time it doesn't really matter but what you could do is set your machine to a quarter inch stitching follow the fold of your bias absolute essential um, or you can just use your regular quarter inch foot or just your regular foot so we're going to treat this exactly as we would if we were stitching a quilt so I'm going to come up to the corner and come off diagonally so let me do that I'm going to set this back because I know that that's not a quarter inch my, my binding so let's just hold that up so I started stitching there I've come down to here and I've come off at a diagonal here look and you can see my binding is open so we're going to do exactly what we normally do so let me just do that and I'll hold it up again so you're going to fold it so it's so that line is parallel so both raw edges are running parallel yeah you just about see that on my machine bed and then you're going to fold it back and that doesn't change so everything about this is exactly as if you were making a quilt so let me just hold this up <laughs> you can hold it and see it at the same time 
So you can see that I folded that over, folded it back, and I've still got my stitch line to follow here. And I'm going to stitch right from the end of that. Um, you might find working with bias that little bit easier because it gives you a little bit of fun give. So we're just stitching in the fold of that crease because that's a great guideline. Try and keep it all straight and of course you might want to, to pin this or use your clips. So go to about a quarter inch before we need another stitch and then come off diagonally. Just as we did before okay <clears throat> and then we're going to fold this up just like we did before keep that um, edge there which I could of course I can't get hold of now there we are keep that edge there open okay and then you're going to fold it back on itself so let me just do that so just the same as I said if you're making a quilt. Put down and then we're coming all the way down to the other side. So you're stitching in the crease of your binding or if you're just doing regular binding you know if you're doing it that way then you know how that works. So right across, so fold it up Hold it back, get it so it's sitting beautifully. All the way along. Right up to the corner off diagonally just like you've done all the way along okay so now we've come back to ourselves okay this is how it looks let me just snip that a little bit there okay so now you're going to do exactly the same so let me show you I'm going to put a pin in there so you can see how that looks. Get a pin in there. There we go. So that's my corner turned. Yeah. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this end and you want it just to cover that that pleated bit, that first bit we did where we folded that over and made a a diagonal can you see that piece there so I'm just going to take my fabric down and I'm going to take it just beyond by about well maybe half an inch like that and then we're just going to sit that over the top so we're going to stitch all the way from that top edge there all the way down to there and just make sure that our two fabrics are sitting um, right on top of each other but we've gone just beyond that diagonal fold okay so let's get that Let me show you the front again so you can see how those layers are so what I want you to do now is just take these corners off just trim these a little bit not much just have to be a huge amount just try to take some of that bulk away and then you can flip this over to the back you'll end up with beautiful um, 45 degrees. I've caught a little bit there. Oh no, I think it's okay. So when this comes back here along that edge, <laughs> let me just do this for me. If 
for, for, for a moment. So when we come to that edge there, look how really neat and tidy that looks. Can you see how that looks? Looks lovely and tidy. And then all of that goes to the back and you could trim some of this seam allowance back, um, but it wants to go all the way over. So you can hand stitch that um, beautifully and that all goes to the back. So let's just have a quick look at that. So I'm going to trim mine slightly. Just get my big scissors in. So this this is um, so you obviously when you trim, let me just do it over the head here. There, you can't trim this little bit here because that's part of uh, your um, seam. So I'm just going in, taking some of that away. So fold it back, go in. Just take some of that bulk away so when you fold the binding over you're not fighting with all the layers. So now we get our clips in, you can see what that looks like. So take it to the back, make sure our, all our corners sit beautifully. And obviously you want to, obviously this is all going to be folded as you normally would. So it's all the same as if you were making a quilt, just tiny version. And this obviously, this is where your, your joins are. So just make sure that you fold that back and just keep that really neat as, as best you can at any rate. When you come to hand stitch it, you can maneuver all those pieces so they sit nicely. And you want to just fold that back so you're doing a you're taking that edge so it's all the way along you get that 45 degree and then it naturally wants to fold and you get that perfect perfect um, corner even on the back just make sure that you're covering the seam again just get that lovely 45 degree at the end there, turn it back and if you've trimmed the fabrics this, this is so much easier. Let's trim that, not trim it, fold it. <laughs> Don't want to do any more trimming. Okay, uh, one more clip. Sorry if this is noisy. So that is our mat completed. <laughs> Looks great, doesn't it? Obviously it just needs the hand stitching done. But there are our two mats done. One with the house on the left, one with the house on the right. This is predominantly green. This, this is more pink and green with a flash of yellow, which is just amazing. So that is Aggie, <laughs> even with her clips on. This is the one we made. And vintage fabric on the back, which is just glorious. That brings me so, so much joy. And uh, it's a great pattern. So you can see we've got a lot going on. For such a small project, we've got foundation paper piecing and we've got the applique as well and the binding. So huge amounts of thinking going on on this little tiny project. Anyway, this is Aggie. This is part of the trilogy for April 2023. We've also got Anna, which is that way, which is the cushion. We've also got Alice, which is the bunting behind me there. Um, absolutely gorgeous. What a super set to make for the summertime. Um, and make it in Christmas fabrics. I know, radical. So thank you very much for joining me today. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with you. I hope you join me again and I hope you make loads.